Hey, what's going on guys? This is Tony Long of TL Audio Mixing and Mastering coming to you with another quick tutorial. So today we're going to be talking about signal flow and just how important it is to your mix. This tutorial might be a bit of a beginner kind of tutorial for anyone who's been mixing for a while. But if you have just started, this might blow your mind. So I've got a track here by a band called Mercury Morning. The name of the track is Deadly Ways. I'll play you just a little bit so that you can hear what we're working with. So super moody, super spacey. I really like this track. Uh, definitely find the band on Facebook, give them a shout, let them know that you are anticipating the release of this track. So back to the tutorial. So uh, recently I was actually in the studio and I was working with a band and we were tracking some vocals. And once we had everything patched in, we had the microphones going into the preamps, uh, preamps going to uh, a Universal Audio 1176 and then going back into the console and then into Pro Tools. Once we had everything set up, we did our session. Everything was great. Now, there were a couple of moments when in the session, the vocals might have been a little too loud, a little too soft. And I feel that when you're first starting out, your initial re reaction to something like that is to just reach for the fader or maybe reach for the preamp because you're thinking, oh, volume, I need to bring down the volume, or I need to bring down the level, so that's who you go for. But because we were using an 1176, we are using a compressor, which, I mean, if you are rocking Pro Tools, everyone's got an 1176 in their Pro Tools package, right? We have the Bomb Factory 76. So if you've got signal coming into your compressor, right, which I had, you know, the microphone um, going into the board coming out of an insert point into the 1176 coming out of the 1176 going back into the board and then going out to pro tools right that was the signal chain so if you change the volume right if you change the input um, of the compressor in other words if you change the volume of the uh, preamp you're essentially changing the level of what's going into the compressor uh, which is going to change your sound. Now, if you already like the sound, you like the way that the compressor sounds, that's where this guy comes in, all right? Sometimes people get confused by this stuff. They're like, oh, like, I don't know what, what to use these for. I'm, you know, I'm confused. This is controlling how much compression you're getting. The more input you put in, the more compression you're going to get. The less input, the less compression. And then this is just, you know, to kind of make up for the level that you're losing with the compression that you're putting in but at the same time this is it's still a volume knob this is really just a volume knob and uh when the vo sorry when the vocals were a little bit low then i was just gonna bring it up over here i just brought it up a little bit on the output and when it was a little too hot or a little too high i brought it down over here because i liked the level of compression that i was getting off of the 1176. now that was for that session, and that, that was kind of the inspiration for this tutorial. So here, everything that's in blue, right, uh, these are all guitars. Here, let's do this. Let's just make these a little bit smaller, a little thinner. All right, so everything that is blue um, are guitars, and they're all feeding into this bus right over here. So after I set all the levels, right, I set all of my faders, everything sounds or sounded really, really good. Um, I routed it into this bus and the first thing that it hits is this EQ. Now, just you know, there were a couple little little problem areas that I notched out, but this EQ is going into this C4, this Waves C4, which is a multi-band compressor. Um, now, whenever I'm working with guitars, I like to just compress this area of the guitars because this is where most of the problems in a guitar seem to lie, at least that's what I think, just in the low mid-range. So I want this to affect the guitar, right? But I was, I was seeing that it wasn't affecting as much as I wanted to because this level over here was at unity. It was at zero before. 
and I wanted to put more level or send more level out of this EQ into the C4 so that it can affect this a bit more. I'll show you what I mean. So obviously when I brought the level down of this of this EQ, it's bringing the level down of all the guitars, right? But the more level that I'm sending out of this is going to start affecting the C4 a little bit more, which is going to control my low mid-range a little bit a little bit better. So it just means that I can send a little bit more of the guitars and make them kind of uh, pop out of the mix a little bit more without getting that kind of low and honkiness over here, which I didn't want, right? So... This is just one example of using single flow, right? Like you're using um, the level going from one plugin to the next to control what you want the plugins to do without having to touch the faders. The faders are all set. You leave them alone, all right? Like, like I've got my static mix. I'm happy with it. Now I'm just changing levels with the outputs. So after this EQ came the C4, right? After this C4 came this SSL channel, and it's the same thing. You know, like I'm also looking at the output level over here. Like I have it at Unity. If for whatever reason it was coming in too hot over here because I made a bunch of changes in the previous plugin and I was clipping in the SSL, I would then bring this level down on the C4 so that it can affect the level over here. Because I don't want to send a clipped signal from one plugin to the next because then you're just distorting your sound, right? You're sending clip to clip to clip to clip and then it just gets, it, it just gets progressively worse. So if I play this and I just mess around with the output, you're going to start seeing that this is going to start getting messed up. See, as I brought the level up, the compressor is being hit harder. This is going even louder, and I, I didn't want that. So, like... This is just, again, you know, just using signal flow, just just looking at my signal coming out of one thing into the next and making sure that it's constantly being controlled. But again, just using the outputs, right, and the inputs to control that level. I'm not touching my faders anymore. Um, and by doing this, you're going to essentially keep the, uh, the integrity of your mix uh, alive and well, you know, because like when you first get your levels down and you're like, oh, that sounds like really good. Let me start throwing some plugins on. Sometimes you throw something on and it starts to sound good, but then when it, start, it starts to not sound good, you start to reach for the faders and then now you've changed the signal going into that plugin and then it kind of changes everything else in the mix, all right? So just try to get into the habit of using your input and output meters in your plugins to then control the signal after you set your levels on the faders. That's pretty much it. Um, i trying to keep it quick. Um, I uh, wanted to just thank everybody that's been liking the channel. Thank you so much. That means a lot. Uh, whenever I go into my, my email account and they say, oh, cool, somebody else subscribed. That's pretty cool. So thank you guys um, for that. Leave comments below. Also, be sure to visit TL Audio Mixing and Mastering on Facebook. Like the page. Uh, that's where I post up my mixes. Uh, so if you want to hear the rest of this song, you can go there. You can also find the band Mercury Morning on Facebook. And uh, that's pretty much it. All right, guys. Till next time.